Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Margo. This is going to be more of an interview style talk. Um, I'm going to ask Margo a few questions and then um, you all are welcome to ask her questions at the end. And if you have questions that come up along the way, feel free to write them in the chat box um, and we'll address them at the end. Thank you so much. All right, so Margo Kren was born in Houston, Texas. Kren spent most of her life in the Midwest. In 1966, she received her BS from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and in 1979, her MFA from the University of Iowa, Iowa City. She taught at Kansas State University for 31 years and Professor of Art of Emerita Kansas State University, Manhattan in 2003. Kren was invited to teach painting and drawing at the Jilin College of Art in Changchun, People's Republic of China, spring semester 2005. She was a visiting artist in the Instituto Allende San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, College de, Cim de Ciment Artistique, et Etricinal, Capimale, Togo, West Africa, and the Academy of Art and Design in Tsinghua University, Beijing, People's Republic of China. Her work has been exhibited at the Downey Museum of Los Angeles, California, the National Museum for Women in the Arts, Washington, DC, the University of Durban, Westville, South Africa, the Deutsche Amerikanische Institute in Regensburg, Germany, Deakin University, Melbourne, Australia, Yunnan Art Institute of Yunmin, Yunnan People's Republic, China, and the Kawasaki factory in Tokyo, Japan. Kren's work is featured in Le Blues Brillant, the, the Blues Crying Book, text by the poet Beverly Mathern, publisher of Cross-Cultural Communication, New York, and in Little Magazines, Polycon 9, News, New Letters, Tightrope, and Stiletto. Kren received an NEA grant in 1982 and attended Yado in 1989. She was awarded the Governor's Art Award at, of, the Can of Kansas in 1989 and the Kansas Arts Commission Artist Fellowship Award in 2000. In 1989, she received the Kansas State University Distinguished Graduate Faculty Member Award. Her work is in various public and private collections. Kren has been active in promotion of the arts on a statewide level, including a stint as a president of the Kansas City Artist Coalition in 1982. So mm -hmm. here we have Margo. And thank you so much for being here, Margo. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. So if you want, we could just get into it. Please. Um, so my first question for you is, um, your artworks have really interesting titles. Mm -hmm. um, where do those titles come from? Well, the best titles come when I'm working on that particular series. It'll be usually toward the end. So let's say the ones that are here, uh, there are 10 works. And uh, I think it was toward the end, the ninth work, uh, all of a sudden, um, to be human. I, I mean, it was a title, or it's a phrase that I've heard many times and, uh, um, and just in writ written uh, literature. And, uh, and so it felt right to do that and to call it that. And yeah. And in um, like the painting behind us, the one of um, Che Guevara and Fidel Castro, um, there is um, a saying, Kren paints it on it. Where does that saying come from? Uh, Raphael uh, put it on his paintings. And uh, he uh, and Picasso did too. Uh, it's because they wanted to let people know that they'd had apprentices to work with them and wanted to let people know that they were very basically in, involved. I mean, it, uh, there might have been some assistance, but uh, they are fully responsible for what is there. And uh, so therefore, when I started uh, selecting, deciding to select um, works by the masters and then juxtapose them with photographs or photographs I'd taken or had found, then I wanted to, uh, uh, it's that, but I didn't copy that. I mean, like, for instance, is this on the screen? Can they see this mm -hmm. one? Yes. Mm -hmm. And of um, Kokoschka. Um, and he's walking with his model. And and he slept with her. And, and uh, yeah. And so, uh, and I think, my, this is my interpretation. I think he's saying, oh, my heart. Oh. And she's, that's all right. You know, that, that comes with it. That's OK. Yeah. <laughs> Sex, that's OK. And so. Uh, she's informing, for, for, uh, leading, leading him, uh, uh, helping him, educating him. And then below is Che Guevara 
and and he's talking with Castro and he's he's saying, Oh, I want to be a revolutionary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Castro's saying you're gonna be killed if you don't keep your mouth. Well, that's my words. I mean, I, I the little what I read about them they didn't talk that. I mean they didn't those are not their words, but I, I, I mean he, he he's in, in Cuba, in Cuba, as they call it, you can walk around and his and uh Che Guevara is everywhere, big posters everywhere. I mean, not posters, but big wall paintings on the side of buildings and nothing about Castro. He said he forbidden, no one for, uh, no to take a picture of him. And so, and sure enough, Che Guevara was killed. I mean, they found him, I mean, it's too noisy. And so, but Castro was trying to educate him and so that is my idea is to invite a dialogue or foster a question or, or I mean, um, uh, and then I'm curious what other people say, find in here because when they they view my work and do they see something more and I and I can add that. To, <laughs> I said, well, I can just add what you say and uh, uh, yeah, and so that's yeah I. I'll go to the next question. Yeah, let's do it. Um, how has your travels influenced your series to be human? Because you've been you've been everywhere. Well, mm, it, it seems like well, I always wanted to go to a place where there was turmoil. <laughs> it was interesting. I, I couldn't go to the North or South Pole. That's pretty. Uh, mm, it's a given. I mean, it, I'm sure that nature and there's a lot going on underneath the ice, you know, and a lot of politics with uh, Russia and going after the oil. But I'm not interested. I'd rather go to. Uh, I'd rather go to Russia and and, uh, and just watch. Not hear. That's what what the guides will say. But what I see and how, yeah, and and Cuba, Cuba. I got my, uh, my Obama's plane came in and landed in there, and then our plane landed, and we had to always be uh, careful. And but he talked to the people, and they said they loved him. And the bus driver said, "You know, he did not uh, tell us what to think. He he uh, he listened to it, and he wants to know. He wants to talk. And he's wonderful." And the whole bus said, "Yes, yes, we think he is too." But that, yeah. So it. Didn't even know the, what I, I mean, didn't even know people. But I'm curious about people. It's like uh, opening up gifts at Christmas time. You want to know what's inside. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yeah. Um, so that, I mean, that grows right into our next question. Um, do politics and international relations play a major role in the series? If so, how? Um, only if I, I'm ready, I mean, it seems to invite it. I mean, when I've got going uh, from the, already, see, I start with the, uh, first I put on the, the work from the masters and that's the construct. And then I find, sometimes I don't get it right away and I don't find something, but uh, uh, it, it just, uh, it's a hit and miss. And then, but all of a sudden it seems right. But, you know, something will come to me. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> where do you source your images uh, that you draw from in this series? Okay. Um, well, the, this one that's on the screen on the right is a, a soldier that fought uh, along with Mao Zedong in, in China. And this is the top of the hill where they actually were able to infiltrate and, uh, and they won. And so it's the back view. I didn't do the front view, and then the, it's the front view of Mook, uh, nude male figure, and he is. Uh, um, I always, when I see uh, as uh, military people, I mean, I see quite a bit because there's uh, Fort Riley, and when I see coming into the post office or into, I mean, the, they'll wear these uniforms that are just rigid and. And then I'm always curious what the body looks like. And, and so, so this body looks forward, that one looks back, and always this. Okay. 
Um, is memory an overarching theme in your work? Uh, yes, and uh, you told me, I mean, you sent these questions to me, yes. And I mean, I've worked with memory. I mean, my memories of childhood and, and we did a whole series and, but never thought much about it. And, and it, it uh, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, well, my favorite, print in the Dreams and Memories series is um, of a, the school nurse. And she was the most uh, authoritative figure in elementary school. She, they would line us up uh, once a year to have shots. And her, her large body, and, and I did a drawing of her giving me a shot. And, uh, and then so it's a memory of that. And then whenever I go to have shots, whenever I travel, I have to have my shots and come up to date. And then just recently the virus, that shot and those two shots. And now, I mean, a nurse told me, just relax and relax. It doesn't hurt. It just kind of pricks you. Know, to, but when you're a child, that's invasive. And that, and so, uh, uh, yeah. And so that memory uh, changes as we, grow older. I mean, that, I still have that memory of the shot of the, the school nurse, but it goes to different levels of understanding. Mm -hmm. Memory is really an understanding of the situation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah. This is changing the subject a little bit, but um, you've mentioned to me and Marissa before that you like to listen to B.B. King while you're in the studio. Yeah. How has music played in uh, role or how has it influenced your practice? Yeah, um, because uh, I mean, I'll be painting along, and I mean, I don't put the music on. I have five discs so that I can really paint as long as I want to without having to change. And all of a sudden, uh, I'll be listening to it, and I think, oh, he did this and this with his notes and his voice. And I thought it, that gives me permission to try something on my painting. I mean, to give it a, to register the some sort of the same feeling. And it, I was timid about doing it, but this uh, reinforced the fact that it should be done. And it's, it's like a silent part. It's a, and, and then I, I, I really, uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 I really admire him. A long time. Um, how has this series differed from your previous work? How is it similar? Okay, all of these paintings have uh, other paintings underneath them, and they're very bad paintings. And I, oh, and so I thought, um, and then I had this idea of of the uh, juxtaposition of the two items on the screen and on the on the canvas and, and working up something concrete and I know you asked me uh, through the questions you said how is it different and and uh, the thing is what the earlier work below I worked with I want to mail just individuals interacting what and a lot of times I'll just smear a canvas and paint and take rag and wipe out and do all sorts of things and let it evolve and on big ones like four by four, which these are, and they're not the small little 17 inches by 14 inches, I, it just wasn't working. I said, you've got to be concrete model. So I I just jessled over the whole thing three times and, but you can still see the blacks coming through. I like that. It's like, um, mm, I don't know, it, it, like the corner, let's see. Sometimes it looks kind of at the bottom, it looks like, um, Blue, I mean, but it's really the, the black of, of a, you know, even the blue will, you can never, uh, but I didn't want it totally covered up. I wanted it to be like skin. I can see the blood vessels and all that stuff underneath. And it's just, and it has a history to it. And, and uh, yeah, and yeah, about that, but there, yeah, I just added blue because it needed something there. And, it, and it, that was, that's on top of the canvas. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you mentioned that um, under the these pieces are paintings of what you deem unsuccessful beginnings for a series of oil paintings. How did these unsuccessful beginnings impact the series to be human? Are these underpaintings and the images in to be human related at all? Not directly. Other than um, they were the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the idea was good, but it it it's got to be clear. I mean, I am eighty one years old, and I don't have a lot of time, and I. I've got to get busy. I mean, it, and so it's not my earlier paintings of the chapel boxes I mean, uh, in Greece and, and traveling around and, and photographing those and then coming back and doing paintings of them. They're like portraits. And then it's about mixing paint. That's all. But this is art. This finally I, I caught on and I caught myself because they say that uh, artists uh, come into their own in their 70s, 70s and in, in their 80s, that they, uh, yeah, if they've been working steadily all along and then all of a sudden it clears up and it gets very clear and you just go for it. And, and I really want to have some of, I want to have these with me for the, going into the next series because uh, I, I want to play off of this. It will be another series, but it, it, I think I can, I have it in my head. I don't have to, I mean, I, I don't really look at them, but I know that about them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know you said that this question you could go on forever, but I really want to ask it. Oh, um, okay. What artists do you look up to? Oh, no, that's right. That's fine. No, it's the ones that, like the ones that talk, your artistic training. I can write a book, you know, and, and I've lived a long life and, and I, I don't want to do that. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> So the, yeah, what are I there are two artists that come to mind. Uh, Stanley Lewis, and he would when I was a graduate student at the University of Iowa, he was a visiting artist. And I really was fascinated by the way he would break up his space and, and the juxtaposition of form and, and of buildings and landscape and, and especially the drawings. I mean, all of it is in the drawing. You get it to a painting and it's all covered up with paint. You can't really you, you I, I appreciate his drawings more, and um, and I and so it's influenced me. I don't copy, but I allow. I see something, and then I move, move it over into my area, and I come to it from my own direction. And then the other person is uh, oh come on oh, oh, oh. <laughs> chief <laughs> oh come on. Hey. Raul Patai. He, uh, he lived in England. He moved to California, was friends with Hoppy. Hoppy? Hoppy? No, no, Hoppy. Uh, names. Oh, dear. He used to be so good at this. Um, but anyway, uh, and he, uh, what he did in his painting, he would have figures in a street and it, they're like dolls and the and the legs popped up and they're just like left there. And then, then other people walk by as if they don't quite see that, but they know it's there. And it it's uh it's uh how you put things that, like these things. If you put two things together then it implies a third thing. That is surrealism. That is making that's when it reaches for something other than you you have the other without even having to paint it. I mean, it, uh, yeah, and that's true with his paintings that they were uh, amazing. Some people I admire their work and they say, I don't like him, I, his work. And I said, I don't say anything because I think everybody finds their own. I mean, it, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Well, I thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I would like to open up okay. for questions mm -hmm. um, and uh, let the audience ask questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to either put them in the chat box or even unmute yourself and ask if you'd like. Rob Phillips has a question. Uh, how does one work affect the next, Margo? Do you mean one series or within a series? Within a series. Okay. Yes. Um, well, I know this one. 
these paintings are re always referring to each other. They're, they're referencing each other. And, uh, and so it's like they, I have to watch it because they get uh, come at me in, in different form. I mean, I'll have an idea for the fourth one. I'm not, I'm not ready for the fourth one. I mean, I'm on the second one. And, but it, uh, it's more, uh, it's more seen if what is left, I was told in graduate school, pick out a topic that is, it's like a deep well, don't go something shallow that you do two or three paintings and then call it quits, but have one that's really deep and get lots and lots of uh, paintings that go on and on and on. And that's what I wanted. I mean, that's my big thing is to, to get uh, deep well, and, yeah, and. So you said um, they reference each other, so I can see that kind of in the subject matter. But do you intentionally stick with a um, a palette or um, a brush? Do you always work in this one medium? Um, have you considered working in any other mediums? Yeah. Well, oh wow. Um, mostly, I've worked with wax. Uh, and I did a series with wax uh, encaustic. I use printmaking lithographs. Um, that's not painting, but uh, but this one I wanted just with yellow, blue, and white, and that and that's kind of like primary colors: red, white, and blue. And it, it's kind of speaks more of a triangle. And it's very emphatic. It's uh, and, and it helps me get to the point right away. It, it, yep, the uh, top of box paintings were just kind of put over and over and the rags. And, and I and even got my, I used to wear these stockings and pantyhose and and I pulled some out of, and, and just different texture and put my hand inside of the, the holes and just, and, or I used big brushes that I brought back from China, really big brushes. And um, um, it's, or, or I like the smudge. I like, I like charcoal because you can make a mess. Mm -hmm. And it and it's very forgiving. Sometimes I, it's the awkwardness of the line that attracts me, not the one that is refined and has been to school, it's been schooled. But instead, it's uh, on its own, and it's and it's vulnerable. And I'll come across it, and I said, "Don't touch that! Don't touch that!" And but sometimes I go in people's houses and I see things I've done, and I think, "Oh, if I could just put this in and I would fix that one right there." I said, "Margo, you, you learn more and more each year, and you have to make something with a show something." To it shows your past and where you've been and let it go. And so I don't tell them that. I just think it's easy. Yeah. 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 I have another question here. If anybody wants to unmute. Yeah. If, um, if anyone wants to unmute and ask a question or type another question in the chat box, feel free to. Yeah, Who's Daniel Garcia? He's a member editor here at the coalition. Really? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's Simpson. Oh. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Rob, if you'd like to ask some more questions, we'd be happy to answer. I had one more. Yeah, please. Um, can you say again how um how the music affected you while you worked? And would you say that um or how it affected you, but would you have said that the music actually affected the work as well? Oh, well, in the fact that it affected me and then transposed itself onto the surface of the painting, I mean, uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, can you rephrase that? <laughs> I'm um, sure. Um, <clears throat> I know that when I'm listening to music, uh, I have to be careful because I like so many different types of music and um, it definitely, like you said, will kind of transpose itself right into the work. 
although my work is kind of uh, is longer in its development cycle, so I can usually not, I won't be affected as much as I think maybe you're painting. But um, like looking at this piece, um, can you say kind of what you were listening to and what about it was affecting you? Richard, are you talking about the painting that's on the screen right now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you're asking me, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. That's okay, what were you, do you recall what music you may have been listening to while you were working on this and what about that music was kind of impacting you, um, affecting this, okay. this piece? Um, this is a painting by Rappaport. He is not really one of the masters, mm -hmm. but I want to, for the sake of, uh, um, of uh, being equal, uh, I dated two gay guys. Um, Rappaport is, 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 is gay still. I mean, he's still alive. And it, he, he uh, and these were his two models. And uh, so I wanted, uh, and, and so I really like, see that yellow at the top and see, and I like it when the yellow becomes kind of a playful, like a child. And I want to say, you know what, where are you going? Yeah, what are you doing? And, and then I like it when, because see, this is pointing there and it's pointing there, like it's pointing two things. So the white is also two or three. And, uh, but that yellow, and then this is yellow on the far left is, Yellow that's uh, bleeding out. I mean, it, it, I painted over it. Mm -hmm. and so that I play with the, um, the you know, the interaction of, oh, there he is. And then this, this is my, the, uh, I asked the dentist, please, I want a copy of my teeth. Like, those are my teeth. And, uh, and it has a, a number. See, that's number 071. Something one two oh, and I thought about concentration camp you know, where they put uh, the edge of the tattoo. Thank you uh, on the arms, the numbers, and so I tattooed. I mean, I, I that was already there. You know, that came with the slide in my teeth, and I like it, and because it then I become a member of that, and uh, those teeth, and then those teeth are like they're talking. Are they eating? Are they? I think they're it's just really an interesting device that they have in it. And so they're talking. And um, I've lost your question. Oh. Music. How does the music? Oh, it's quite all right. I'm still enjoying the, the answer I got. I've got some clues. Richard, just a minute. He, uh, Rob is asking about the music Rob? and saying when you look at this painting, do you hear the music that you were painting alongside, or does the music actually become a part of the art? How does it affect your painting? I don't think it becomes part of the art. It um, it's the rhythm, and my heartbeat is a rhythm, and everything's rhythm, and it puts me in a and. Um, well, I know that when it's really going well, I'm painting, and then I'll start doing this dance that it's not really a dance, but just movement. And it just kind of, I'm all alone, so I can do whatever I want. And so it's uh, in my studio. And it, uh, and so the music, it's, it's reinforcing, it's, it's life affirming. And another artist, and his life was incredible. I mean, what he went through and he did too. Wow. Very nice. I mean, it, it, it did not uh, lay him low. And he still was able to create. And that is a, that is a, that is incredible. We have another question in the chat from Ion yeah. asking. It looks like each composition, each piece, okay. consists of a split screen, two scenes. Okay. Um, why did you do that? Well, first of all, uh, I mean, I usually I do it uh, uh, five foot by four foot, and this is four by four, and you break that up into quite uh, like uh, geometrically, it ends up well. Uh, I want a comparison. 
I'll show you the, the, the teeth and the two figures uh, and have a dialogue between the two. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Huh? Like a discourse between the two or a reflection? Not a reflection, because a reflection would be the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's more of a. Well, if I just saw a, this drawing by Monk, mm -hmm. I wouldn't think anything about it's just a beautiful drawing. I mean, incredible. The awkwardness of this. I mean, the man is older, but it, he's an incredible. Being, I mean, his, and, and his shadow, how he makes that shadow go way out. And it's more you know, it's attached to his feet. And he must have really, see, that is when an artist, you know, where they say, oh my God, what have I done? And they, and they say, oh, this is so, it's probably silly. And, and, and he probably did it, but yeah, I would. And I think, but then I think, no, it's beautiful because it's this man's history. And it's, uh, I'm not going with you. <laughs> I'm doing that. Too. And so, you say, how did the two different images on the canvas yeah. kind of, how do you decide? Why do you decide about the monk image against the Chinese soldier? Why those two? Okay, one is naked and one is not. Mm. What about here? Okay, this is a uh, Picasso and it's a. Uh, a couple having a go at it. And so, and his, he, there's a passion to mm. his couple. Uh, Kokoschka and Monk Monk uh, is gentle. There's a gentleness mm. about his figures. And I, in Paris, there was a march, and, and the guide said, We're going to stay inside today because there's a march called, there's a, a, a protest movement. And it's and we, uh, we, we feel you you will be safe inside. And I said, Oh, well, um, uh, where is this going to be? And I said, Well, he said, you, you are going to stay inside. And I said, Yeah, but I want to go shopping and I have to get a few more things before we leave tomorrow. And and uh, I want to know how to avoid that uh, protest. And he said, Well, okay, here's a map. And they're going to be joined around the Joan of Arc statue, and that's why they're all clustering. And then they're going to bleed out into the various streets. And they're in Paris, they protest everywhere, I mean, every day, because they like to go into, I mean, subways don't work, and, you know. But anyway, so everybody loves to protest. And so, and so I thought, oh, I want to go. But they're protesting against the pen. See the yellow? And that's a banner that they were carrying down the street. So I just clicked it. I mean, I just, uh, I photographed it. And then I just uh, project that. I don't only use that part on the screen. And it's saying the pen and uh, yeah, letting pe people know to vote against it. He's yeah. a um, Nazi, uh, racist. I mean, no, I mean, and they did. They voted against him. And then below that is Jean Paul Sartre and Simon de Beauvoir. And they were lovers and writers. And, uh, and that particular time in the 40s, like, I shouldn't get into that. But, so, uh, but anyway, um, so you kind of have like two two divisions, not divisions, but they kind of push against each other. Sometimes they do, sometimes yeah. they don't. Sometimes they embrace each other. That's what I hear. Okay, that's a that is a mask from Bhutan, and the the religion is based on sex. And so uh, you see these masks or uh, uh, drawings that they make drawings on the sides of buildings. And it's uh, um, the little baby and then uh, cut as a result of sex. And so, but he's got, see that blue in his ear? Yeah, right there, there, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, see, that was just plain, just like the other one. But I made it blue, I put that blue there because he's listening to this embracing couple. He's listening to them. Have a go at it, and he's going, mm -hmm. yeah, and he's done. And so, and I just put it that, and, and see that this one of the horns, horn like things, like the part of the reindeer. And, and look how the, this one goes and stops because it changes. It, in the face, stop, and there's a line. But on the side, there was no line. And 
Now that is intelligent. I mean, that's, it, it looks like it would be a cartoon, but it's intelligent use of cartoon. I mean, it's, it's meaningful and that the person is aware of line, black design, and, and color. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. And they're not, it's not just, See how they, they don't come down the same? You have one top show and the other one, but they're kind of like two people, kind of like not sure. I hesitate, I hesitate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So Daniel Garcia has a question. Okay. Um, what would works of yours look like? It's inspired by the master artists like Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, or other Latin American artists. You, I, I know you have four other works too that are here. Yes. Are any of them influenced by any of those people? No. Okay. No. No. Um, or any Latin American artists? Okay. Um, I have one in Mali, Africa. Um, I have so black. Mm -hmm. I tried to get it diverse as much as possible. And um, no, I don't know why, but yeah. it, is this series for you finished? Yes. Okay. I mean, it could go on, but I think they're all equally just right. Mm -hmm. No, no. I think these earlier ones, like this one, mm -hmm. and the ones I didn't bring in, comparing those together, the ones I didn't bring are a little bit more um, complicated. I like it when, I mean, like with Jigabetta and, and uh, uh, in Costco. I mean, it's very, bold mm -hmm. and to the point mm -hmm. and it might be, and it might be a little busy the other one then they're, they're not bad but they're and i think they're important but yeah any other questions um are there any other questions in the audience that the audience would like to ask um feel free to unmute yourself or to put in the chat box what you've been doing I don't have any questions, but uh, it's just fun seeing you again after all these years. I know. Crazy. Well, this is I own, and uh, it's nice to see you still working, just like like I'm doing too. Good for you. Good for you. you could, um, because do, do they ask you, um, why do you do it now? I mean, you, you can retire, sit back, relax. Do, do they try to encourage you to just take it easy? You don't need to draw now, don't have to, you don't have to prove yourself anymore. I think it's more of a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge of solving problems, but keeping the mind alert, and it keeps me sane. I, I agree. Uh, I'll quit when I die. <laughs> I guess that's it. That, that, well, I explained it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and if you quit, you are dead. I mean, that's right. Good for you. Uh, can you give your address, your email address, and give it to uh, Marissa or, or Isabel, and uh, they can pass it on to you? I'd like to be in touch. Sure. Yeah. My yeah. email is uh, M K R E N at uh, K S U dot E D U. My sound quality isn't great. I'll I'll ask Marissa to uh, get that to me. Okay. Thank you. This is M Prime at K S U dot E D U. Ah, good. Any other last lingering questions? 
Okay. Are there any last questions that people would like to ask Margot? Um, feel free to unmute or type in the chat box. Speak now or forever hold your key. Yeah. Well, this is not really a question, but more of just a comment. Uh, looking at this piece, I see like the uh, the black and white drawing to me takes me back to the 80s when you were doing a lot of the, the prints. Uh, oh, yes. And I, I love seeing that connection of the present to the past in your work. Even though it has changed, I really like that connection. Connection or else that is me. I mean, that is, uh, people have said this particular one, they said, Margo, that's you, that's the way you draw. And I said, where do you get this idea? And I, I mean, I can, I can draw, I'm a oh, pony. Look, I, I replaced, I mean, I, well, not totally. I mean, I did, I want to make it as much as possible like Kaposta and then back off and then say, well, I think that foot should be just a little bit darker so it goes forward and then push that back. And I take certain areas not to disturb when you slide that. For instance, that stolen crossbone right on to the, can you put on to the, yeah. uh, Right underneath her armpit, you know, right there, that's, that's uh, yeah, right there. Exactly. That was all covered with lines. And I covered it, I took out, I didn't put all the lines in there. And I said, ah, so therefore it is Eros and Thana, Thanatos. I mean, death, I mean, death and love and death. Yeah, is that right? In, in, in which, that's a big theme in uh, the painters for uh, this one. I mean, that, uh, and so, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I think what you said, Marilyn, I think is true in the sense that I like their line work. I like the awkwardness of it. It's not rounded off and fluid and, and, and uh, look at how many toes. I think they have about 16 toes and, <laughs> and, and, what, and his toe, I think has a big one and then two other little ones. Looks like hammer toes, I'm not sure. But it, it is just, but that's what he drew with him. And I love that. It, it, uh, it's, it's just kind of cutting and going to get this just right. And get it, uh, and then we'll, mm. We have another question about, and you kind of talked about this a little bit, Margo, but what, uh, Donna wants to know, what, what do you think the conversation is in this piece between Shay and Castro? You kind of talked about that a little bit. I did, and uh, see what uh, I think. I think they were very close. I don't think they're homosexual. Um, but my, yeah, I don't know that why I said that. Yeah. But I think, uh, and if they were, fine. I mean, it has nothing to do with. Uh, but what do you think you're talking about? Do you have any inclination? Or what are your? Well, to continue, I, I think. Uh, they're very close. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I'm interested in how that evolved mm -hmm. during the whole process of being a revolutionary. And it's an important time in Cuba. And mm -hmm. it still is. It's just the same problem. And Castro's, Fidel is gone, but the brother is turned it over and there are now uh, lurking other uh, individuals in the family, but uh, it's going to be the same thing. It will never break. I mean, it, it's uh, socialism. I mean, it, 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 but their health, they have the medical facilities and things. And yeah. Castro did a good thing, you know, to uh, what he did. And yeah. some things not as good, but that's just anything. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, last comment, just a comment, is from Rob. Uh, he says that he feels like each of these are moments in time, like memories. Ah. Uh, with abstract or emotion-centered connections. What's that? Abstract emotion? Abstract or emotion-centered connections. So uh, moments in time, yeah. memories right. that are connected All of these. through abstract um, Abstraction or emotion. And that these. So that kind of centers everything. The abstract would be the yellow that kind of mm -hmm. defines its own little mm -hmm. territory. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then also, <clears throat> I used the, 
I photographed these with a digital camera and then I placed them, I projected them with a digital projector onto the surface. And that, that projector is, squeezes things and does things. And, you know, I, I, if I needed to get it right, it's not. But can you put that in your chest? And go to the, yeah, there, yeah. And look how, where the, it touches at the top. See, I mean, I have left it that way. I mean, it is off a bit. Yeah. And also, I painted those. I didn't paint like this because it would have been too tight. And if I thought it was my brush, I put that eye and get it going. But instead, I, I stood to the side of it and I just painted, you know, like this. Yeah. I mean, the, there was an image projected on this, onto the surface. And I, yeah. And I, and I did it in blue. I did, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much, Margo. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your work with us. And thank you, everyone, for being here with us yes. and for attending this talk. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night, yeah. everybody. Bye bye. We oh, Donna. That's Donna. Yeah. We appreciate you. Thank oh. you for sharing your work. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. It was so good to see you, Margo. You too, man. You too. Oh, my God. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, thank you.